welcome to Genesis Volatilities Educational Series. Today we're going to talk about a foundational concept in risk management known as the Kelly Criterion. To really highlight the importance of the Kelly Criterion, let's start with a couple theoretical examples. First, have you ever noticed that in a casino, some table games have a maximum bet size? If the house always wins, why would the casino limit how much you're willing to bet? Shouldn't they want you to bet as much as possible? Let's start with the game of blackjack. Typically the house edge in blackjack is about 1%. And when thousands and thousands of people are playing blackjack for $25 at a time or $50 at a time, the house is able to isolate that edge and churn out a consistent profit. But let's say that a bigwig came in with a billion dollars and he said, I want to bet a billion dollars on this next blackjack hand. Why would the casino not want to do that? Well, the casino would also be betting a billion dollars and even though they have a house edge of 1%, that edge isn't enough to justify the variance. They're essentially gambling a billion dollars on a coin flip. That's why there's a table betting maximum. The casino would rather process a billion dollars of bets in little chunks at a time to reduce the variance and isolate the statistical edge. Let's look at another theoretical example. Let's assume that we have a 50-50 coin flipping game. If you lose, you lose your bet. But if you win, you'll win 10 times your bet size. So if you bet a dollar and you win, you'll win $10. If you bet a dollar and you lose, you'll lose $1. This game clearly has a statistical edge to you and a large one, one that you probably are hard to find in the market. So how much should you bet on this? Well, let's assume that you bet all in each time you play this game. So you take all your money and you bet it all in this game. You can keep playing this game, but at some point you're going to get a tails or lose the coin flipping game and lose all your money. So despite the edge being significantly large, if you go all in all the time, you are guaranteed to go bankrupt, despite how good the edge is. So the question then arises, what is the maximum bet size that I can do to A, not go bankrupt, but B, grow my wealth as quickly as possible? Here's where the Kelly Criterion comes in. In 1956, John Larry Kelly, a computer scientist working at Bell Labs, developed the Kelly Criterion. This individual was able to answer the question of how much is the optimal bet size that guarantees I won't go bankrupt, but also will grow my wealth as quickly as possible. Edward Thorpe, one of the godfathers of finance, actually wrote a book called Beat the Dealer, where he explored how he actually beat the casino at the game of blackjack and used the Kelly criterion to determine the optimal bet size as he was card counting. Edward Thorpe is also the discoverer of convertible bond arbitrage and wrote a book on convertible bond arbitrage that Ken Griffin, the CEO and founder of Citadel, read in Harvard and began to apply this strategy to his personal funds and later developed into the Citadel that we know today. So the Kelly Criterion has deep roots in finance. So what is it? Assuming that we know four important parameters, we can back out the Kelly Criterion. So in our previous example, we know that the win rate of the coin flip game is 50%. We know that the loss rate of the coin flip game is 50%. We also know that the win amount is gonna be 10 times and the win loss is going to be one time. So given these four parameters, we can back out the Kelly criterion using this formula. And now we can see that the optimum bet size is 45% of your bankroll for each play. So if you win, your dollar size for the next bet is going to be bigger. And if you lose, your dollar size for the next bet is going to be smaller but the percentage of the bankroll is gonna be consistent. It will always be the Kelly criterion. Something important to note is that the distribution of wealth growth is maximized at the Kelly criterion and is symmetric around the Kelly criterion. 
Meaning, if you bet 10% more than Kelly, it's gonna grow your wealth at the same rate as betting 90% of Kelly. The only difference is that betting more than Kelly increases the risk of bankruptcy. Betting less than Kelly also guarantees you never go bankrupt, but you'll grow slower. Kelly Criterion guarantees you don't go bankrupt and you grow at the optimal rate. Implicit in the Kelly Criterion Ratio are some important assumptions. First, the probability of winning and losing are known. Second, the win amount and loss amount are known. Third, is that all these variables are fixed. Fourth, is that each play is independent from one another. These things get more complicated when we're applying this to financial markets as opposed to predetermined casino games. The first complication when applying the Kelly Criterion to financial markets is developing the parameters themselves. We might be able to use a back test to figure out the win probability, loss probability, and the win and loss amounts, but back testing the past 20 years of performance doesn't guarantee that the next 20 years of performance are identical and that the parameters are stable. Another complication of the Kelly Criterion when applied to financial markets is correlation. You might be correlated across asset classes and geographic locations. You have cryptocurrency investment bets, you have real estate investment bets in South Africa, you have FX bets in Brazil, you have American equities, so on and so forth. But then a global pandemic happens and the correlation of all these bets now becomes a lot higher. Thirdly, another complication of using the Kelly Criterion in financial markets is that the outcomes are not discrete, but rather continuous. A coin flip is discrete. You flip a coin, it either becomes heads or tails. But a trading position is constantly moving around and your risk reward ratio changes from your entry price as this moves around. So therefore, your initial parameters are constantly moving. So how can we use Kelly Criterion in financial markets given all these complications? The Kelly Criterion Ratio should be the maximum size you're willing to bet as you become more statistically certain of the parameters. The less certain you are of your parameters, then the smaller the fraction of the Kelly Ratio you should trade. If you're pretty certain that your parameters are right and the strategy has worked for a long time and your back test has a lot of statistical points to it, then maybe you trade half size Kelly, meaning you're trading half the optimal Kelly Criterion amount to put in a buffer for the parameter misspecification risk. If you're even less certain, then maybe you trade a quarter Kelly, and so on and so forth, constantly reducing your trade size in order to ensure never going bankrupt and growing your wealth as quickly as possible. I hope you found this video helpful and remember, find edge, capture alpha, and slang Kelly Criterion risk adjusted size.